step out, step in. This is a weekly podcast to encourage, motivate, inspire you to step out of your comfort zone, to step in to what you have been designed for and to do. Hello, this is David Joe. Please join me this and every Monday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on my Step Out, Step In podcast, live on YouTube, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube page, like and follow me on Facebook and LinkedIn. One more favor, share and comment. Hope to see you on Monday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, or good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you're watching from. And again, um, I want to welcome you all tonight for uh, episode 27 of my live uh, weekly podcast, Step Out, Step In. And I also want to take this opportunity to wish you a wonderful, happy new month and welcome to the month of May. That this is the fifth month in the year 2023. You know, May is such an amazing and a wonderful month. Um, and it's all because I was born in May. <laughs> so welcome you to the fifth month. And of course, the number five represents grace. And again, thank you for tuning in to episode 27 of my weekly Step Out, Step In podcast. Um, if you are on there, you can please share the link with at least one person. Let the one person share with another person. And please comment. You can comment. Uh, for some reason, I'm not seeing those that are coming those that come on unless you comment. So if you can put in a comment in there, I will be grateful. And tonight, um, I'll be talking about the grace for disappointment. <laughs> You know, we are in the month of May and the number five represents grace. So it is grace for disappointments. All right. So now let's see here. Okay. All right. All right, so again, uh, thank you for tuning in. And if you haven't yet subscribed, please do so. And don't forget to click on the notification bell so that anytime I post something, you'll be notified. There is also a link in there that says buy me a coffee. You can support this, 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 this page or you can support this um, YouTube uh, link or page by just a um, $5 donation. Um, so follow me on Facebook and LinkedIn. And um, again, subscribe to my YouTube page. All right. And every Monday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I'll be coming your way live on YouTube, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Again, my name is David Joe, and um, I'm a person of faith. I'm an author and husband and uh, father to my wonderful and biological children. And I am your friend. <laughs> that is the most important thing, right? And um, let me say this. I know it doesn't always happen. But then if you get a chance to um, visit my page, there are other episodes. Um, you can browse through them. And um, you can watch them. <laughs> and after you've watched them, uh, you can please, please comment and share comment and share all right so episode 27 grace for disappointment and you know grace grace is the the basis for the christian faith we believe we are all saved by grace through we are all saved by faith through grace <laughs> And, um, and God's grace is usually defined as undeserved or unmerited favor. It is also uh, said that grace cannot be earned, but it is something that is freely given. 
It cannot be earned, but it is freely given. You know, and the word grace originally meant God's favor or God's help. God's favor or God's help. Uh, let me see here. God's favor or God's help. And, and we count on God's grace and, and the bridge he, he built in our relationship with him. And I say that life is full of surprises. Yes, life is full of surprises. Life is full of disappointments and, and also surprises. You cannot do well. Okay, just one more minute. I got a wrong screen on. Okay. Now, you cannot do well if you don't if you don't know how or if you don't learn how to handle surprises and disappointments. And tonight I want to spend some time and I want us to talk about this. And, and in fact, God, one thing that I know is God never promised us any, um, uh, he didn't promise us a problem-free life. Never. <laughs> and, and do you know that God did not put in his user's manual, the book, the Bible, what he gave us. He did not put in it any adversity exemption clause. Now, I know that Jesus said one thing in John chapter 16. You know, a person of faith, so uh, give me the opportunity to share some scriptures with you this evening. Um, just bear with me. Uh, okay. In, in John chapter 16, and verse 33 John 16 and verse Jesus says something and I want to see if I can I can project that uh, let's see just one moment just bear with me in a moment Okay. See, that is technology after you've done with all that. <laughs> they have a mind of their own. Okay. <laughs> all right. So in John 16, 33, and let me read that. Let me read that to you. I was trying to project it, but for some reason, it's not coming up. It says, these things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world, you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. In fact, I like the New Living Translation version, which says that, I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows. <laughs> but take heart because I have overcome the world. Now, this is Christ saying this, and, Jesus, and, and if he's saying that he has overcome the world, then you and I have every confidence to believe in him, to trust him. He said that you may have many trials and sorrows. In spite of the many trials and sorrows, we have to, we have to, uh, we have to trust him and believe in him because he is the overcomer. He has overcome the world. And anybody who has overcome, and he's telling you that you have to trust him. We better do so. Thank you, Samuel. Oh, that is my amazing, wonderful brother. Um, a brother from a, uh, another mother. <laughs> In fact, he was my best man many years ago, over 20, 20 something years ago. All right. I'll try. I'll try, <laughs> teacher. <laughs> 
Okay, so, you know, God has given us all these promises. He's given us all these promises. And, um, and, and, and we have to, we have to adhere to it. We have to embrace it. We have to embrace all these promises that he has given us. It doesn't matter how rich you are. It doesn't matter how tall or short you are. It doesn't matter how poor you are. It doesn't matter how anointed or unanointed you are. There is what makes us, that is what makes us human beings. We all go through something at any given time. We all go through. And, and do you know that at any given moment or any given time, everybody, everybody is going through something. Whether you like it or not, everybody is going through something. Everybody goes through something. <laughs> Whether we like it or not, everybody goes through something. And that is what makes us as humans as we are. So we can depend on God who has no limitations. You and I are limited. But the God we serve has no limitations. All right, so let me see who's here so I can acknowledge one or two people here. So please, again, just share the link if you're on here. Okay. All right, so just share the link. Just share the link um, to invite at least one person. And let's do this together. On Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube. Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube. This is episode 27 uh, of my weekly Step Out, Step In podcast. All right. So let's go on. You know, there, there are two kinds of surprises. Um, in my view, in my opinion, there are two kinds of surprises. The one that brings delight and great pleasure. You know, um, let's say on your birthday, you get, you get these roses, you get these flowers on your birthday. Oh, it's a surprise. You get a new car on your anniversary. Hey, it's a surprise. You get a ring and a knee <laughs> uh, to, a propose, to propose for marriage. That's also a surprise. So, you know, okay, let me, put, sometimes that is, should I say non-surprise? <laughs> yeah. So the first one brings delight. The first one brings great pleasure. And that is not what we're talking about tonight. The other surprise is the one that brings disappointment. The feeling of sadness. The feelings of displeasure caused by non-fulfillment of one's hopes, one's dreams and expectations. The kind of disappointment that keeps ringing your doorbell. And sometimes they come in unannounced. And they tell you, hey, surprise. You know, I believe you saw your life. And you perceived your life in a different way. But it has taken a different turn. Here you are, late on, late and behind on your dreams and on your bills. Your world has come tumbling down, which sets in anger, disappointment, resentment, frustration. Ladies and gentlemen, we all go through some level of disappointment every now and then. When we look at the disciples of Jesus Christ, they all at one at, at a given time they went through disappointments too. Let's take Peter for instance. Peter went through so much disappointment, <laughs> you know, to the point where, when Jesus resurrected in Mark chapter sixteen and verse seven, the Bible says that. But go tell his disciples and Peter. Why did he single Peter out? He was disappointed in a way. He says, go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him as he said to you. 
Now, this was early the resurrection Sunday when the three women decided to go and embalm the body of Christ. And when they got there, they met the they saw the angel, and the angel gave them this information, this message to go tell the disciples and Peter. You now, Peter was a fisherman by profession when Jesus called him. Peter became disappointed after the death of Jesus because they never believed that P um, Jesus was going to come back to life. He was, he was disappointed because they, ne they didn't believe that what Jesus was saying until it happened. Now, when we look at the, his disciples, Judas was also disappointed. That was why he betrayed Jesus and sold him for 30 pieces of silver. That was the price of a common slave, um, the price or, or for a common slave or a common slave, because he was disappointed. He was. And, and I, you know, that's one thing I like about Peter. He's such a character. Every, everybody around knew who Peter was. All these years he walked with Jesus. <laughs> I believe that that was the reason why nobody messed with him. Because he had a knife. How do I know? <laughs> when we look at John chapter 8 and verse 10 and 11, um, the Bible says that then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. The servant's name was Malchus. Now, this was when Jesus was arrested, the, the, night, the night when he was arrested. Peter had to, because of all the frustration and the anger and all that, he drew his sword. And he slashed off the ear of the high priest um, servant called Malchus. But in verse 11 of John 18, Jesus did something. So Jesus said to Peter, put your sword into the sheath. Shall I not drink the cup which my father has given me? In other words, Jesus was telling, this is not how you have to fight the fight. And I believe that Peter was, was aiming. In fact, Peter, I believe Peter was aiming for something more than the ear, but he missed <laughs> And, and do, you know, do you know how many times, how many times you and I have aimed for something out of anger, out of frustration, but God made you miss? Do you know how many times? I believe that we miss it all the time, out of frustration and anger. I, I don't think that Peter was aiming for the ear. No, he wasn't. Because out of anger and frustration, when the moment he drew the sword, it was going for something more than the ear. But God made him miss, and he got the ear. But Jesus did something miraculous. He put the ear back on the, on the servant of the high priest. Why did Jesus do that? He did that because back in the days, it was punishable by death. If you assaulted a Roman soldier or anyone connected to the high priest, any servant of the high priest, it was punishable by death. Death. So Jesus had to put the ear back to erase every evidence so that Peter would not be sentenced to death. I believe that Jesus has and is raising your evidence, which the devil can use against you. Now, we're looking at the life of Peter. He promises Jesus that he was going to be with him throughout, no matter what. He will stick with them, stay with them. He, will, I mean, let all the other people leave. He was going to stick with them until the cock crowed. But then he had denied him three times. He had denied him three times. And here Jesus is beaten, he's scorched, he's crucified, dead, and now buried. And because they, they did not believe, you know, they, they did not believe that Jesus, you know, Jesus told them that I'll, I'm going to go and in, in, in three days I will be, I will, I will rise up again. They didn't believe him. 
So unbelief can also make you disappointed. And that was why they, they were all disappointed. Most of them were disappointed. Peter was so disappointed and frustrated that he decided to return to his former life, to his former job. Now, this is somebody who said, I have left everything <laughs> to come follow you. <laughs> but out of, out of frustration, out of disappointment, he said, I'm going to go back to my former job, fishing. So he, and we can refer to Isaiah chapter 55, and he tells us that for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither nor, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as high as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. And tonight I just want to share with you three keys to overcome disappointments. Three keys to overcome disappointments. Um, just stick in there. I'll be back in just a moment. Okay, just one moment. See, I just love technology. <laughs> everything was set tested. The moment you start, everything decides to have a brain of the own. Anyway, all right, so let's keep going. All right, so I want to share with you three keys, three keys to overcome disappointments. Number one is identify the Lord. Number one. Is identify the Lord. In Romans chapter 8 and verse 11, Romans chapter 8 and verse 11, and it says, But the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. He who raised Christ from the dead will also give you, give your mortal bodies, will also give life to your mortal bodies through His Spirit who dwells in you. But if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through His Spirit who dwells in you. Now, if, if God raised Christ from the dead, if God brought Christ back to life, He can and He will. He can resurrect every dead situation back to life. Every dead situation. God can raise it back to life. When I talk about dead situation, it can be your Christian life. He can raise your Christian life back to life. He can raise your finances, which might seem dead. He can raise it back to life, your business, your career, your marriage, your health. Whatever it is, there is nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing too hard for the Lord. There's absolutely nothing too hard for the Lord. So identify the Lord. And once you identify Him, just as... The scripture says that he who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. He abides in you. He remains in you. And he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life. He will give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. And that is what God can do in your life. He can bring everything back to life. Every dead situation. Number two is listen to the Lord. <laughs> listen to the Lord. In your days and your times of disappointments, your days and times of frustration, listen to the Lord. 
you know, I shared when Peter said, I'm going, I'm going back to fishing because of disappointment. He was disappointed and said, let me go back to my former job. Because here Christ had been crucified. He, he, he was dead and had been buried. And he, he thought that he was not going to come back to life. So he, his, his hopes were shattered. He said, let me go back. But then he fished, he went with six other uh, or seven other disciples and, and they all went, got on the boat, towed all night, you know. Peter being a professional fisherman knows that the only time you can have a great catch is during the night. So they towed all night and caught nothing. <laughs> God had messed up with their, um, with, 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 with their situation. Because he wanted to come back in and prove to them that I am God and I know your frustration and I can take you back to the places where you have failed and I can make you uh, successful in the places that you failed once upon a time. In John 21 and verse 4 to 6, it says that when the morning had come and Jesus stood at the, on the shore, yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Sometimes your disappointment can blur your vision. Jesus was standing. This is somebody they had walked with for three and a half years. He stood at the shore and they still didn't know who he was because of disappointment. May disappointment not blur your vision. And the verse 5 says that then Jesus said to them, Children, have you any food? And they answered to him, No. Now, they were listening to Jesus speak to them. And that is what he said, In your disappointment, listen to the Lord. And the verse 6, he said that, He said to them, Cast the net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So the caster now, they were not able to draw it in because of the multitude of fish. Because of the multitude of fish. Jesus speaks to, to us in, in all, in, in, Jesus speaks to us in many ways. He speaks to us all the time. He speaks to us in many ways. But I, I, I want to encourage that. Let us develop a habit of hearing the voice of God through, number one, through His Word, the Scriptures, through prayer, through preaching, and, and the rest. You know, God doesn't have one fast rule of speaking to, you, to us. He has so many ways of speaking to us. But we can hear Him more through His Word, the written Word. We can hear him more through prayer. We can hear him more through preaching. Now, the authentic preaching, his word, the authentic word of God. And we can hear him through other means. Now, so let's listen to him. So number one is let's identify the Lord. And once we identify him, we can always listen to him. And as we listen to him, let us obey the Lord. <laughs> you know, it's a different thing than listening to him and that, and it's a whole different ball game when you listen, when you know him, when you listen to him, and when you obey him. Now, Jesus expects us to obey him, obey his word, even in our times, in our days, in our seasons of disappointment. I said earlier on that, Every now and then, we all go through some form of disappointments, whether we like it or not. It will come anyway. It will come in different forms and shapes, but we all face disappointments. We all face disappointments. We all face disappointments. And just be... Um, okay, just give me one moment. Let me test this and see if it's going to work now. Okay. 
All right, so let's let's proceed. <laughs> so in John 21 and verse 6, I read this scripture early on, and let me read where we, we obey Christ. And it says that, and he said to them, cast the net on the right side. He gave them specific instructions as to where to cast the net. See, cast the net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. What if they had not obeyed him and they would have cast the net on the left side? But Jesus gave them specific instructions because they were listening. And as a result, they being obedient to the voice of Christ, they were able to have to, to, to get a great catch, a multitude of fish. And I believe that when you and I obey the voice of the Lord, He can let you succeed and win at the same place you once failed. Now these were the, 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 Peter and the rest of the disciples, the seven of them um, on the boat when he said, I'm going to fishing, will you come along with me? He was able to, in a way, um, influence them. They got on the boat with him. They talked all night. They didn't catch anything. The same place they failed. Jesus made them succeed. And I believe that when we become obedient to the Lord, he can let you succeed and win at the places or at the same place you once failed. He will turn your situation around. He will turn your situation around in your favor and for his name to be glorified. God is the only one who gives grace to handle and overcome disappointment. You know, I've said it, we've all been through days and times and seasons where we've all been disappointed at one thing or the other. I've been at a place where I've been disappointed too. I mean, times that I had decided to just throw in the towel. And God, yeah, you know, God has such a great sense of humor. Anytime I had decided to throw in the towel, God will send a message for somebody from somebody. I've, I mean, I've been spoken to that person for a long time or I get a text message to be encouraged. <laughs> Don't leave. Be encouraged. Don't leave. Stick in there. Stay put. Don't give up. Don't give in. Because there's an appointed time coming in. I don't know what disappointments and frustrations have done in your life, but tonight I just want to encourage you that don't let your disappointments cause you to call back into the shell. Allow the grace that comes with that disappointment cause you to break out of every shell, break out of every box, break out of every limitations. And as we allow Christ to lead us as we get to know him as we become um, obedient to hear his his voice through his word and through uh, prayer and all that and we become be obedient to his 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 voice he will always come through for us so tonight i want to say step out of every distractions step out of every disappointments and step into being focused I always say that the world needs your unique gift, talents, and abilities. There's something unique about you. There's something amazing about you. There's something so wonderful about you. You're custom made. You're so wonderful. You're so unique. And whatever gifts, talents, and abilities that is deposited on the inside of you, the world needs it. Don't leave this world with a gift still unwrapped inside you. Step out. Break out of every shell. Break out of every box. Break out of every limitation. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we're so much used to being in a box. We're placed in a, in, in a box in our mother's womb. 
And when we came out, we were placed in another box called the crib. And when we grew out of the crib, we were placed in another box called the school. I mean, we've been in box, but it is time for us to break out of every box because of your, your unique gifts, talents, and abilities. I'll be back in a moment. Step out, step in. This weekly podcast to encourage, motivate, inspire you to step out of your comfort zone, to step in to what you have been designed for and to do. Hello, this is David Joe. Please join me this and every Monday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on my Step Out, Step In podcast, live on YouTube, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube page, like, and follow me on Facebook and LinkedIn. One more favor share and comment. Hope to see you on Monday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. All right, again, thank you so much for tuning in to my Step Out Step In podcast um, live or if you happen to uh, come across a replay. And again, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube page, um, share comment and um, you can support the page by buying me a coffee <laughs> there's a link in there that says buy me a coffee I, I'm a coffee drinker I love coffee too so you can just click on the link a $5 donation will go a long way and thank you in advance for supporting and um, and just before I sign off um, let me do this Let's see Okay. System decided not to respond to me today. Please pray for me. Okay. Let's see. Hey, hey this is David. I'm a pastor at All Nations Church, Virginia, located down here in Stafford, Virginia. I want to personally invite you to worship with us this Sunday. When you get here, you find a welcoming family. You participate in our uplifting praise and worship songs. You also hear a Christ-centered dynamic message. We are a church to come discover where we are restoring people and releasing their potential by connecting them to God. And we are located at 1449 Courthouse Road, Stafford, Virginia. And the zip code is 22554. We'll see you this Sunday at 2 p.m. All right, so again, if you're looking for a family-oriented Bible-believing church, and if you're within the Stafford, Fredericksburg, Quartico, Dumfries area, I would like to personally invite you, just as you saw in the clip, um, every Sunday at 2 p.m., and the address is 1449 Courthouse Road, Stafford, Virginia. For more information, you can visit us on the web, www.allnationsva. Dot org. And I also want to introduce my spiritual father, Dr. Frank Ofosua Pierre, um, every Tuesday at 6 p.m. on the Ambassador of Hope um, uh, live streaming. And he does this on YouTube and Facebook. Now, on YouTube, it's um, Franco Fosso appeared the official, and Facebook is the Ambassador of Hope page. And these are teachings um, uh, that are destiny shaping. These are teachings that are life changing. And he's given it to, he's given to us for free. I mean, I know people pay money to go listen to these teachings he's given, given to us for free. Please sign on every Tuesday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Facebook and YouTube. YouTube is um, Franco Fosso Appear, the official, and Facebook is the Ambassador of Hope page. And I, I, I can assure you, this will help you in, in your personal life. It will help you in your career, your business, and in your education, and many more, your marriage as well. 
And if you haven't subscribed to his page, please do so. Follow him on Facebook as well. And we have our flagship um, Ion Shopping's Ion Leadership Conference coming up uh, from July on July 19th to the 23rd. This is our flagship leadership conference. Uh, please save the date and make all necessary arrangements um, to register and to be there. Uh, for more information, you can visit www.advancedlive.org. www.advancedlive.org. All right. So, once again, thank you all so much for tuning in. And it has been a wonderful and amazing time of spending this wonderful time with you. You know, I don't take this lightly at all. And again, thank you so much for spending your time with me. And if you haven't subscribed to my page, again, please do so. <laughs> you know, I, I'm just passionate about this, you know. Just do so and um, click on the notification bell and comment, share, and uh, what else? What else should I? <laughs> All right, so again, let's connect every Monday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And let's watch the space. In this month of May, I pray that the abounding grace of God that makes the impossible possible will always locate you in Jesus' name. Until we meet again, same time next week, have a wonderful, amazing, fruitful, and a productive week. Goodbye. This is David Joe, and I say goodbye.